Oh, what's going on, everybody? All right, in the upcoming video, I have to make a correction. This is a 16 pill amp amplifier, Toshiba 16 pill amp, but it's on a 32 pill case cab and heat sink. In the video, I call it a, a, a 24 pill. I, I don't know where I got that, but uh, well, yeah, when you hear me say 24 pill, it's, it's 32. It's a 32 pill case cab and heat sink and everything, 16 transistors. But uh, you'll see. All right, let's get into it. Woo, looking nice. Oh, yeah, what's going on, everybody? All right, I uh, I just sold sold them sold some things here. I normally don't sell anything because I I don't know I don't want to deal with the haggling, you know, all the the headaches that go with it. But yeah, these are sold, and I'm gonna document this and show everything that is indeed working in the shape that it is in before it, uh, you know, the transaction. So anyhow, the sold items are this is a full package deal, three items. This is a 16 pill. That I built about uh, about eight years ago. That's on a 24 pill case cab and all that fun stuff. It's an, it was an experimenter's box. You'll see. I'm gonna pop the lid. But uh, okay, next in the deal was this 500 amp regulated Fat Boy power supply. She is a beast. Beautiful, really good shape too. I'll do one more zoom over. Uh, you know, I'll do one of these things. Zoom in real close near the end of the video. Show the condition of it. And the uh, main thing is these are. Real, uh, genuine uh, uh, Toshiba 2079s from RF Parts. I've got these about, like I said, about eight years ago. Look at that. Isn't that a beautiful thing? You don't see too many of them anymore. So, and I do believe they are the same, they're different watt numbers that are in there, but they're the same gain. They match. So, you can actually turn this into a 30 pill, 32 pill. So, it's pretty cool. Alright, I'm going to do a uh, pop lid on here. Show the ugly duckling there. And then we'll get everything powered up. I got the 220 run. It's actually pretty quiet. All right, let me get the lid popped on that and I'll show you what's going on in there. All the flaws and everything. I want to be absolutely transparent about this. Nothing hidden. I like to be very, very honest. The, all right, I'm going to stop this, pop the lid, and then uh, we'll take it from here. All right, here we are with the lid popped. Uh, going forward, I cannot stress this enough. This was an experimenter's box. Um, I do not build these for anybody. I do not market these. This is all for my own experimentation. So I do that a lot up here, as you can tell. Lots of lots of experiments. A lot of learning. A lot of, a lot of neat stuff. So going forward, experimenter's box. This is my back here. This is really, especially this is bodged up. I can't remember where I left off. Um, I get experimenting with different inductance and all kinds of stuff. So the first few parts you swap out, you know, you put them in nice and neat, make it look nice. It's all good to go. But after the 20th time, you're like, you know what, just slap the part in there. <laughs> and uh, I want to get on with the experiment. So yeah, little little ugly there, but it does work. Uh, I'm going to be absolutely honest about this. Um, this relay was sticking. I got to tighten this uh, SO239 connector up. You know, when you're, you're keyed up and you one key, the receive doesn't come back all the way. I have to squeeze it, you know, click it a couple times. That that's what was going on with this this relay. I want to be absolutely honest. Okay, there's that. Uh, now these power cords, you might want to get these done. Might want to get some good uh, you know, copper lugs put on there. These are ratty. They're not going anywhere. They're solid. But as embarrassing as this looks, uh, I don't care about embarrassing myself. I want to be absolutely honest. Okay, they're solid, but so I highly recommend for what's at stake here. For these transistors, they're very rare and very expensive. I highly, highly recommend that you send this out to somebody who really knows their stuff, that does this on a daily basis. All right, because these, these these transistors are a gold mine. Get it properly tuned for your purpose. Um, yeah, that's that's what I would do. And then you can refer, reference them to this, send them to this video here. All right, and I'll say to them, this was experimental. All right, it's uh, pretty pretty ratty there. All right, all right. Going on to the uh, fans. Um, I put each fan on a so 12 volt regulator. So I'll spin around there. It's a little dusty. All fans are regulated. Okay, and here's a breakaway harness. How many of you guys have to uh, pop the lid and you have to unsolder to get the, the, the lid separated? So you just unclip that wire. Boop. Set the uh, lid up to the side. 
All right. And I'm going to show you real close up here. Now this copper, it's eight years old. That's what copper does. It all oxidizes. But all the connections are, are good. So if you ever see an amplifier, anybody out there, see these 10 ohm resistors from the base of the transistor to the ground right there. If you see any of those that are charred or burnt, that means there's a blown pill. All right. Not always, but I mean, it's you can blow a pill and have that be fine. But if you see one of those charred, there was trouble in one of them pills. I'm going to zoom in here. We'll go through these. Shining and pristine. Go to the other side. Like I said, I'm probably going to repeat myself a whole bunch of times in this video, but it's extremely important for me to catch everything and be honest that's i that's why i'm not in the business of doing this um if i sold something to somebody it's not everything they dreamed it to be i would feel it would be horrifying to me and i know that's an impossibility so that's why i do not build for anybody it's just my conscience would eat away at me people spending a lot of money and if something were to be not quite right i'd uh wouldn't be able to sleep at night yes i'm that All way right. the ugly duckling experimenter yeah, that's going to probably have to be gone through, tuned out. So, all right. I am going to... This is getting crowded here. This is a big setup. <laughs> yeah, damn. So, I'm going to get that amp, like a cover put back on. I'm going to set it up here. Brace it up on something so that it doesn't block the airflow. Get everything hooked up. And then I'll uh, we'll put, some, put some juice. Put some juice to it. I'm going to show it working. All right. I shall be back. All right, got this propped up on here. I'm gonna show you the steps along the way. Got the lid set to the side. We're just gonna do a power up. No RF. That's all hooked up. There shouldn't be red on here. There should be no red. Just take care of this stuff when you get it. I would, yeah, put, put the right proper lugs on there. And I uh, normally have a bolt going through. That's the way I did have it. And you have this big braid going to the ground for, you know, to, to ground. So, yeah, make sure to take care of that, so. Yeah, that's that's a no-go. Red, anything red on a negative. I don't care if the wire's black. This, I don't know. All right. So, amp off. Supply on. Okay. Amp on. There you go. Blue is power. When you key up, that LED should turn red. I'm just going to leave this set for a little bit. Make sure it's all good. I'm going to let this, this sit here for a while. And then, uh, I wish I had a FLIR. I don't have a FLIR. I just have a uh, laser temperature gun. But, uh, yeah, no RF yet. I'm just going to let this set. Make sure. All right, I'll be back. All right, we've got this thing put on the ground because we're running out of room on the bench there. She's powered up there. I'll show you the uh, setup. Let me help my Nolan 7000 DLE. I can't believe I'm... <laughs> Guys, you know the Nolan 7000 DLE Mark II. I, I can't believe I'm running this into a Class C amplifier. But hey, this is just testing. There's no dummy load. All right, I have the transmitter. I'll show you the bolts. Goes into the input there, of course. And then I'll uh, help put... Go all to my... 1000 watt slug. There. And out to there. And to my dummy load, which is out of spec right now. I, I'm in the middle of making another one. It sits at like 50, about 58 ohms. So, anyhow. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and keep this thing up. Now, remember, this is a super incredibly clean transmitter. All these watts you're going to see are actual on, on channel watts. So, I'll show you what I'm doing right now. Hold on, let me. Uh, this first audio one two three four five audio test one two three Let me turn this on here so that's a thousand watt slug it's just under 400 watt carrier with 17 watts of drive. Like, I'm not going to tax my non out. There's only 100 watt uh, 
transceiver, so I'm at the limits there. Um, I would never want to can any more 25 watts with that thing, so. All right, here we go. Audio one, two, three, four, and five. Audio test one, two, three. Audio test one, two, three, four, five. Audio test one, two, three. So with that power right there, audio test one, two, three. Getting uh, pegging the uh, 1,000 watt scale right there. Audio one, two, three, four, five. All right, super simple test. It doesn't seem to be doing that relay uh, on the receive there. It seems to be reacting pretty good. That, like I said, the SO239 connector in the back there. Uh, I thought I had that. I don't know. I, I tighten it up, and it seems to be fine now. But keep an eye on it. Audio one two. Audio one two. So she's working. She's working really good right now. I'm just uh, I'm not screaming into the mic. I'm just barely talking. I'm just barely talking right now, and that's the output. Right there, one, two, three, four, five. All right, down here. I was gonna give the old finger test. Don't do this, boys and girls at home. Here, pull the cucumber. Everything cool. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and put the uh, lid back on this. Uh, get that plugged in and show you the fans working. Oh, and the voltage. Up oh, one more time there. Oh, wrong button. That's where she floats. Well, I'm, gonna, well, I'm gonna go back to my chair over here if I can zoom in while I'm talking. There's a layer on there. Hang on. Damn blair. Alright, I'm gonna go ahead and see up again. Oh, where'd you go? Where'd you go? There you are. Audio 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Alright, there's the power supply. Supplying. <laughs> Alright, now I'll get the lid put back on and get this thing buttoned up. All right, I'll be back. All right, got the lid put back on. I gotta find a damn screws for this thing. I, I know uh, we planned on meeting this weekend, but uh, because of the inclement weather coming up this way, I plan on doing it tomorrow. I didn't have time to go down and get screws. <laughs> Maybe I'll dig some up around here, but uh, yeah, this thing's been sitting for many years, and so. Uh, just be aware of that. I'm just trying to be upfront and completely honest with you. So, yeah, we're a few days early. Didn't give me a time to get down to get more screws there. So, power us up. Okay, here we go. We'll look around here. Remember what I said, I highly recommend you get somebody a very, very extremely experienced tech to uh, get through and tune for the price uh, you're getting this for. It is a quite the steal. I know you're helping other people out and it gave me a kind of soft spot in my heart for you. So, uh, yeah, if you the price I gave you, divide that by three and that's what uh, each piece you're getting, uh, getting it for. So, <laughs> so you're getting... Even if you don't use this amplifier, you're getting a 32 genuine Toshiba 2879s. Getting a good deal there. One more time, the, the voltage. All right, that's a wrap. I'm gonna, uh, yeah, put this video together and go around this side here and get this all, all uploaded. And then I'll be seeing you around noon, around noon tomorrow with the. Uh, yeah, it's a nice setup. All right, buddy. I'll talk to you later. KP68, I am free and clear.